Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me with Lapland ice driving on a frozen lake near to Arjaplog in Sweden, about 80 kilometers away from the Arctic Circle. Now they've invited me to come and join them to learn to drift in one of their Porsche 911 991.2 GT3s. I'm going to find out if this car rekindles a flame, having sold mine a couple of months ago, out on this vast expanse on the lake behind me. They actually have five full-size replica racetracks, including four Formula One circuits and Le Mans, as well as some training areas too. But this car that I'm going to be driving is not so standard. So the first thing I want to do is show you around the car, talk about how they prepare it to be driven in this way. And then today looks set to be epic fun. I can tell you, driving a car like this out on the ice is one of the most exciting things you can do on four wheels. So let's get started then and check out the GT3. I can tell you that the hospitality here is amazing. You have a number of clubhouses, instructors, people on hand. I think one of their 458s has just come in behind me. There are Hurricanes, Focus RSs, the Subaru WRX STIs, and also the 911 GT3s. Now, let me give you a quick introduction to the car if you're not familiar with it. It's the second generation of the 991 GT3. It's got a four liter flat six, all the power going to the rear wheels. In fact, 500 horsepowers of them. It's got the seven speed PDK. You could get the car with the manual, but out here the PDK makes a touch more sense. But there are many things about this car that have been changed away from standard to prepare it for driving in these conditions. Another 458 actually just coming past as well. But over that way, you've got Yas Marina, Paul Ricard, the Le Mans circuit, Silverstone, the Nürburgring Grand Prix track, all of which are replicated to be enjoyed in these. Now, the parts of the car that are changed actually extend all the way from creating new front bumpers. This is a fiberglass front bumper that's obviously stronger than the standard piece. You can see the new grill covers over the front of that to stop too much snow going into the radiators when you inevitably go into the snow itself. You've also got this massively reinforced front splitter, a permanent towing eye, Coming around to the wheels and tyres, new wheels, lappy tyres, studded tyres, of course, to have as much grip as possible out there. Remember, obviously, that is the critical thing if you're driving at high speed. And here you can drive these cars up to 200 kilometres an hour out on the ice, which is moderately crazy. New wheels, the side skirts of the car have actually been removed to give it a touch more clearance. Even the rear bumper has been changed and the exhaust system is um, pretty much straight through. That sounds nuts, as you're going to hear very shortly. Of course, they're also kitted out inside uh, with radios, intercoms, and then up on the roof, the light bar, because you can drive into the night. So you've got the bright lights at the front and also around the sides so that you can see as naturally you're going to be drifting. So when you're going sideways, let me just climb in all left hand drive. Let's take a step in here for the moment to start this thing up because it sounds mental. Ignore all of the messages that come up. Basically, they've hardwired the car to turn off ABS, traction control, everything. All of the systems have been removed. It is you, the driver, and the car. Now, we do have the exhaust mode valve switch there. You can hear that got a touch louder. Wow. The sound is nuts, honestly. What an amazing, amazing noise. The suspension has been reworked. The entire car prepared in every way. It's reinforced also on the underneath. There's a full tray underneath to make sure it works. So basically, taking the Porsche GT3, I've kind of stolen the T apparently, Porsche GT3, for the certs for the snow and making sure it's ready and raring to go out here. So I think it's time to actually jump in and get a feel for what this is like to drive out here on the lake. All right, so I'm going to pop it into manual. We've got PDK and Sport and I know lots of you are going to be screaming during this video because I'm expecting to have an awesome time that I should not have sold my GT3 and I discussed a lot of that at the time that I had to sell mine because of the complications with it being registered in Germany but also with the inbound Ford GT and I needed to somehow get some funds together to sort that out but this is quite a different driving experience when you're out um, on the, uh, the ice, literally frozen lake about a metre thick of ice underneath us as opposed to driving on tarmac and uh, <laughs> listen to that sound. It lights up the rears pretty quickly with the noise of the flat six. We just built some revs, four and a half thousand RPM or so. It is mental. Um, 
Yeah, so, downshift. I missed that, I can tell you, I missed that an awful lot. Anyway, we are going to turn in here. First stop is going to be on the oval, just to uh, get a little feel for this. Braking with the studded tyres actually works impressively well. I am going to start off this way, and in fact, I'm actually just going to take a moment to uh, gather my, uh, my thoughts and feeling for the car, because this is all, it takes so much learning to get used to, to what you have to do here, and in fact, the last time I did a, uh, a snow driving experience was actually with four-wheel drive cars, and here they have the complete setup, some two-wheel drive, some front, some rear, some four-wheel drives, so that you can get all of those different experiences, but obviously here, we've got a rear-mounted engine right hanging out over the back of the rear axle, and um, I need to get a, get a feel for what this does, so just as we come to the exit of the turn, give it a little press of the throttle, <laughs> That's the thing with driving on snow, you have this extra level, or on ice even, you have this extra level of control that you don't have when you're driving on, on tarmac at slow speeds. Just be patient with it, feed in some throttle, delicately balance the steering wheel. I know it doesn't sound particularly noisy doing that, but um, I'm concentrating now, you can tell, I've gone a bit quieter. basically would work is that you come along, you get tuition, and you would learn a little bit of the, the fundamentals and driving dynamics before you then go out onto the proper racetrack layouts. So of course that's basically what we're doing, heading to the handling circuit now, which is actually a brilliant little track. Really tight, twisty, technical, you can link some corners together, but it just feels weird driving on sheet ice listening to that noise. <laughs> Everything about this is so awesome. So here we are then. I guess I don't really need to indicate. I'm just thinking uh, road rules here on the brakes. And in we head to Les Escuyers. As before then, let's be a bit steady to begin with. It's actually only minus four here at the moment. It can get as cold as kind of minus 20, that kind of thing. But this is a track that I had to do some sighting laps on earlier to actually have an idea of where it went. I love that, T1, just gently sliding around. There are some different speed sections, there are some linked corners, there are some bits that are taking some learning, shall we say. But just let the back out there. This bit gets quite uh, quite technical. You've got kind of three corners that link together almost. And you've got to be a bit patient. I went in a bit fast there. That's how much difference it makes. But it's triggered me into the next one quite nicely. <laughs> Lap one, so uh, obviously taking it a bit easy at the moment while I just get my get my bearings a touch. Tight corners as well here. Wow, oh, almost double apexing this one. Hold the slide around. There we go, and into the next. Get some sound out of it. Get some revs. Waiting for it there, then feeding the throttle back in, 
Now we come towards the hairpin, which uh, has been a bit of a struggle for me. So trail brake into the corner, let the back out, give it some throttle then. <laughs> As the confidence builds, so do the speeds. <laughs> Turns going. Wow. It's so cool what you can do out on the ice. The slightly unintuitive thing is that you don't just want to bang on than that, which is why it's perhaps almost a bit more docile than you might be expecting as <laughs> we uh, fished a little bit out there. if I do say so myself right there. It's unreal how addictive this actually is. Just to get a feel, give it a little bit of a flick. It's a patience game so much though, waiting for the right moment to feed back in the power. Trying to link those turns together is one of the hardest bits. But this is where this track is set up so beautifully to at least offer you the opportunity to do this. To swing it from one to the other, just patience again, patience again, patience again, not too early on the power. So much fun! Flick it in. Wow! That's like a couple of corners in a row linked now. Get on the power a bit here. <laughs> right, I'm almost having too much fun here. Let's head off for a moment and not uh, get the last corner wrong. I give it a break for a minute. We've stopped off at the workshop on our way to get some lunch before going back to the lake later on to drive on some of the replica racetracks and I can't wait for that but there's going to be a small change in the car that I drive which I can show you inside in a second so come on in this is where they do all the servicing and maintenance for the cars in the fleet and inside here is actually something brand new the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso V12. Then next to that, this is the car I'll be driving this afternoon. Another Carmine Red Porsche 911 GT3, except one major difference. If we just come through, you will notice this car has a manual gear stick and a clutch pedal, whereas the car I was driving earlier was the PDK, the automatic with the paddles. So that'll be a different kind of experience this afternoon. But just take a look around here. Lots of cars as part of the fleet, starting from the M240i's, you've got the Cayman S, the Subaru WRX STI, you've got a whole range Maserati, Lamborghini Huracan, that's a rear wheel drive Huracan, the LP580, but with the V10, there's an R8 lurking just beyond the Focus RS, but like I said earlier, a range of different powertrains, styles, rear engines, front engines, four wheel drive, rear wheel drive, different experiences. So I think that car is going to be fired up and taken on over and then it'll be time to drive again. Wow, <laughs> that's really loud. And this one is a full bred GT3 by the way. But yes, sounds very, very good. Anyway, shutters are opening. I'm going to head back out to the blinding brightness where it is actually currently snowing, unsurprisingly. Um, that will be fired up. We'll head on over just a couple of kilometers from here to be at the side of the lake. I keep wanting to say track, but it is literally to the lake. The 
sick of that. That look, actually looks really quite cool. And then it will be time to go out and drive again. And I cannot wait. This is, seriously, it is so much fun. And these guys put on an unbelievable experience. Massive, massive shout out to Lapland Ice Driving for everything that they do with this. Now I have driven the manual version of the 991.2 GT3 once before and it was on track at Ascari and where we're going to head right now actually is over to Yas Marina which does sound kind of odd given that Yas Marina would never really see snow like this given that it's in Abu Dhabi in the UAE and also amusingly I was actually at the real Yas Marina only a couple of weeks ago so it's quite fresh in my mind as a circuit um, manual gear shift this thing feels so balanced immediately. The short throw, the lovely feel to the clutch pedal. It's got a lot of torque available. We've got the six speed manual in this. And yeah, away we go. <laughs> One of the hard things they're driving on snow actually though, is to get the car to rev highly because you want to get the torque and have more stability, which you do get when you drop down some gears. So you're actually tending to be in lower gears might make it sound less dramatic than you guys are wanting to hear out of the car, but... <laughs> Just run into spurts if you can hear a small teaser of it as we get up towards Yasparina at the far end. Here we go then. We've entered Yasparina circuit. Now we haven't joined at the very beginning. We'll get to that in a moment, but you can get some pretty decent speeds up here. We're going 120 kph. I'm going to disengage sport mode just to do this myself actually because, well, who doesn't like to manually rev match and have a lot of fun while you're at it. Now there's an extra chicane here because otherwise you'd be going a little bit too fast around this track, um, but we can try and uh, <laughs> do some sliding on Yas Marina. Um, I certainly was not doing any sliding on Yas Marina when I was there not very long ago. Well, this is going to take me some small familiarization to get back used to it. It's a very high speed track, of course. They opened this last year and then this year opened up the new Pora Card full F1 circuit. So we've got a very tight hairpin coming up. But how surreal is this? to be driving the turns of Yas Marina but on the snow without the normal landmarks to look at as we link from one to the other yes that feels cool wow build up some of the revs now this is where you have the really high speed bank left hander up into fourth gear obviously short shifting to get a little bit more grip using the lanes because there's a lot of soft snow around down here you can build up some serious speed. <laughs> I'm just taking it a little bit cautiously to be honest because I know there is a very tight corner ahead. We go down to four. Well, this is actually a really cool section of the track. Down to third. We've got a few turns. Let's see if I can link these together. We pitch in the front. Yes, that's one. Can we get the second one? That's two. And the third, that is three people. Three linked turns, how cool is this? And a bonus fourth there just for fun. Should we go five, can we, can we keep this going? No, we've got another tight one right here. Oh, the GT3 is so cool for this. The balance is awesome. The grip and the power at the rear. This is a very, very, very slippy track right now. But using what I've learned earlier today, wow. You've got to keep your eye line up. You've got to keep looking at weird angles out into the distance as we head back round past where we entered. Get a nice drift going here. Be slow on the hairpin. And then away we go. <laughs> it feels wrong to be driving at these kind of speeds on snow and ice. <laughs> on a replica Yas Marina. 150 odd kilometers per hour. On these conditions. Hard on the brakes here. As we come in towards the S's again. Patience. Catch it the other way. And we come back in again towards the marina. <laughs> big angle there, big angle. 
around under the hotel. This would never get boring. All day, every day, if I had to. Yes, Marina. Wow! It is starting to get darker here quite quickly, but I think the size of the smile on my face tells a story. Driving both GT3s, BDK and manual, has actually been really interesting. I think for this environment and this purpose, the PDK makes slightly more sense because you're thinking about your slip angle, getting the track right where you're going, not worrying quite so much about the manual gearbox. So I don't really have any regrets on mine that I had PDK. That was a big topic of conversation. I love the car. There's no question about it. The sound it makes, the feel of it, how balanced it is, is super supremely precise and perfect but of course mine made a space in the garage for the Ford GT that's a whole different topic but what's going to happen now is the arrival of this the Lamborghini Huracan LP580-2 580 580 horsepower from the 5.2 V10-2 rear wheel drive only this is also a seven speed dual clutch gearbox couldn't get a manual in a Lambo Huracan but I suspect we might need to turn on the bright lights so we're going to take this out as well to do a couple of laps similarly you'll notice it's got those gr grill covers which you can actually hot release and open up to take out any snow that might get inside a new bumper uh, their own bumper on the front their own side skirts with the mesh you can see there as well to prevent too much snow getting into the cooling and uh, again with all of the aids completely disabled so that car like the gt3s is um set to have some fun so I i'm not gonna lie it is really very very cold right now without the light, I was going to say sunlight, but it wasn't really sunny earlier. So let's hop on in, take it out, and see what this is like for a quick bonus. In the Hurricane then, the first thing that we actually need to do is to turn on the light bar up at the top, so that we have a lot more illumination anyway. Excuse the wipers, it is now snowing decently. So, into gear. It is Hurricane time, we've got it in Corsa mode, basically full hardcore. Of course we have everything completely off, no ESC, nothing like that. Okay, there we go, just a small little slide. We're in a mid-engine car now, not a rear-engine car, which is a little bit more familiar for me, as is that V10 from many miles of driving in Lamborghini Huracans and Audi R8s before. But we're gonna head out just to do a couple of quick ovals, and then after the oval, we will go and do one of the practice tracks. So, let's give this a go then, and see. <laughs> How it is. Fairy tale happy is the answer. We are literally in a slide straight away from entering into the oval. That gives you a sense of what this is going to be like. So up to third gear. Yes! Oh, this is cool! That was really cool! This is a bit of me! I love it! You can hold it right around the centre, it's a major angle at the back, and away we go down the middle again! an unfamiliar circuit then to me but the car is so much more instinctively I think inside my control I just feel like I'm more naturally aware of what the Hurricane is doing than I was the GT3 he says he nearly overcooked it there but <laughs> listen to the noise of the engine behind me too it's so balanced out here I love this I think normally speaking this would be a harder one to drive but I am absolutely loving it. Come out of the corner so smoothly as well. It is starting to get a little bit darker now, but just enjoying the car, using the gears as well, linking the turns, keeping it quite tight. Patience, patience, patience back on the throttle, short shift again just to help give some stability 
this is quite a long corner coming up, but a very, very fun corner. Because you've just got a lot of width to the track, a lot of ability to balance the car, bring it in, push it out, depending where you want to go on the track. We're still at an angle here, of course, the whole way around. It's just such a patience game, even more so in this car than in the GT3, to be honest. But this is epic. I wish I could do this on tarmac on a racetrack, but hey, this isn't too bad a bit of fun to be having. In fact, it is absolutely mega. I tell you what, this is really tough on the GT3 that I've just driven this car right after it. Take a listen to this for a second as well from the V10. Yeah, you see my point. The sound, the GT3 sounds good. That sounds mega. I think if I hadn't driven this today, this video would have a very different ending. As it is, it's not necessarily how I expected or thought that it was going to go, as another 458 Italia pulls in alongside us. I really enjoyed driving that. I really did. The light has now well and truly gone down and the hurricane is going to depart for the time being. Sleek without its roof light bar on at the moment. But what's been quite cool actually in the dark is watching in the distance as you can spot some of the, uh, the headlights and things as they're going around the various tracks. And look at that view, the sunset with the break in the clouds over that way as well. And there is also a Focus RS that has arrived. We're gonna have a quick play with that and then we're gonna head back to the workshop because this has been a really interesting day for me. Whether I've got some questions to answer about whether I regret not having the GT3 and what I think about the Hurricane versus the GT3 as well. So I'll have a quick blast in the focus, gather my thoughts, and I'll come back to you from the workshop with a final outcome. then where of course all of the cars are now being prepared for their next outings tomorrow but this is time for me to tell you my thoughts following this unbelievable day to be completely honest what an experience so like I said at the beginning I was thinking am I going to regret the fact that I sold my GT3 and up until the point when I drove the Hurricane that was very much the case the noise of the naturally aspirated engine whether it's PDK or manual in fact for me in this environment, PDK was the most appropriate, but realistically, they are just as good as one another. Both of those gearboxes are absolutely fantastic. Porsche do a magical, magical job with it. So for a while, I was thinking this car, how sad it was that I had to sell mine, obviously, to make way for the GT, for GT to arrive. But then when I drove the Hurricane, it reminded me how much I'm a fan of mid-engined supercars. And yes, the Hurricane in this guise is still about a 50% markup on the list price of the GT3, but that was a bit of me. I really, really enjoyed the feel and driving experience, but what an opportunity to drive them back to back, to feel that, to feel how they compare, to learn to drift, to learn to drift in a GT3 rear engine, 500 horsepower with that sound as well, out on race tracks made out of snow. Lapland ice driving absolutely rocks and I thoroughly recommend checking it out. Honestly, what an incredible day, what an incredible chance and a big thanks to them for making this possible because need I say any more than what you guys have seen today? What an awesome one. So thank you very much as always for watching. That is it for this time though. I'll be sure to catch up with you again very, very soon. Cheers.